Hello, OMSD. I'm Ronnie Wink. And I'm Lindsay Wickersham. And we're here today to talk about student self-reflection. Our learning target for today is today we will explore the importance of self-reflection and student learning and share some examples of how students can use self-reflection to enhance their learning. Sounds like fun. So here's the importance of self-reflection. First of all, research shows that giving reflection time is valuable to anyone as a means of creating greater self-awareness, appreciating process as well as product, and deepening one's learning. For students, this means slowing down to think about what they are doing and what they are learning. We don't always take the time to allow students to connect the dots between activities. As teachers, we might see the bigger picture and understand the overall goals, but unless we make that transparent to students and leave time for them to reflect on how they're doing and why they're doing it, we might leave students, some students in the dark, struggling to move from one concept to another. Self-reflection in learning means examining the way an individual student learns. It implies that without thinking deeply about how we learn, we can never gain the insight necessary to correct poor habits and affirm good habits. This cognitive process of self-reflection, therefore, not only helps students improve learning outcomes, but fosters self-regulated learning, a cyclical process that involves planning to complete an academic task using strategies to monitor progress, evaluating the outcome, and using that knowledge to guide future tasks. Obviously, strong feedback is a very important part of this process. Without teacher feedback, a student may reflect on his or her experience, but may not have the ability to draw an informed conclusion. Self-reflection takes time and consistency. Teachers must see the value and be willing to set aside time and space for students to do this, this sort of thinking and or writing, but when they do, they see the results and they're well worth the time that is allotted. Self-assessment and self-reflection involves students reviewing their work and reflecting on their learning progress. This helps students participate in and take ownership of their own learning. So through self-assessment and self-reflection, students can evaluate their work against a set of criteria, for example, a rubric, track their learning progress, identify areas of strengths and weaknesses in their skill set and knowledge, set realistic learning goals, reflect on their learning style and processes, act on feedback given from their teacher or peers to improve performance. So how do we teach self-reflection? Here are some quick tips when beginning the journey of teaching your kids to self-reflect on their learning. You can teach them the language. Empower students to self-reflect by teaching them vocabulary that lends itself to that reflection. Practice role-playing and explicitly teach the words that students don't know that will help them express their thoughts. Give student, students center, sentence starters to talk or write about, such as, I wonder, when that happened, I felt, or I felt confused when. Another idea is to have students sketch or draw. So they can sketch or draw what they've learned or how they feel. Having a piece of art they can view is a great way to reflect on um, this in the future. For example, if a child is very frustrated with a new concept, they could draw a picture of how they feel at that time. Over time, as the concept becomes easier, they could draw another illustration of how they feel after making progress and reflect back on that moment when they felt frustrated. Um, and they can recognize how their hard work and effort has paid off. You can keep portfolios. Portfolios lend themselves to student reflection. They have the added benefit of being available for parents to reflect on the kids' work and to help their children reflect on their work. Things to include in a portfolio might include student work samples or graphs that show anything from student behavior to growth in academic areas. When children look at their portfolio and see the growth they've made, it reinforces the value of self-reflection. 
You can assign students a reflection buddy in the classroom. This is a student who they can talk to about their work or the progress in class or something difficult they might be facing with a new concept. It can be a student in the class or a cross-age tutor. When grouping students in this way, be mindful of the personalities and group the kids together in a way that they can build trust with one another. Also, give them a structure for answering reflection questions. You can also use learning journals. Incorporate five, minute ref five minutes of reflection time for students to discuss and record their learning in their journals at the end of a lesson. Some prompts for those journals might include, what is one thing you learned? What was the most important thing you learned? What questions do you still have? What strategies helped you learn? Or what are the challenges you faced? While those were some generic ideas for student self-reflection, we would like to share some examples you can start using in your class right away. You will have the links to all of these examples in the slides. The first one is called a 3-2-1 reflection. The students will reflect on three things they learned and explain their choices, two questions they still have about the topic, and share one muddy point or something they don't understand. This can be done on a Google slide, it can be written, or students can even share their ideas aloud in a round robin format. Here's a great example for math. Um, it can be used as like a bingo board where they have to fill in certain squares to answer those questions or the teacher can choose one prompt. So one of the prompts is tell me something you noticed today and how it helped you solve a math task. So you can have fun and be creative with this as a teacher and um, the kids can choose which of these um, reflection questions they can answer. And again, in the format that you want them to answer either verbally or written in some format. Here's another idea. This is called rock, paper, scissors. Kids love to play rock, paper, scissors, and it's a good visual since they pretty much know how to play that. The rock represents the hardest part of the lesson that focuses on metacognition for the students. The paper has students analyzing what is most important about the lesson, and the scissors has students reflect again on the lesson to state what could have been cut out from the lesson or the best part of the lesson that they have to justify. There are a lot of ways to make this um, appropriate for any grade level, but they do enjoy the rock, paper, scissors idea. Here's a fun one called YPMG. So the Y stands for yes, and that's something that the students enjoyed, they really love, or maybe they connected with. The P section, students are going to write something from the assignment they weren't looking forward to, but it turned out to be okay. So the P stands for few. And in the M section, students are going to write something from the assignment they thought would be difficult, and it truly was. So it's a made it. Oh man, I made it through this hard part. And then the final in the G section, students are going to write something from the assignment or learning that they feel they grew in the most during the assignment. So the G stands for grew. What a fun way to self-reflect. All right, and here are six examples of metacognition in the form of dice chats. You can use physical dice, virtual dice, any kind of dice. You could even have a dice for each table group or partners to roll and share. The idea is to get the kids reflecting about their learning and each of these different examples has them reflecting about different parts of the of the lesson. Lastly, here is a simple idea that might be appropriate for kinder or first grade students. It's green, yellow, and red card and on each card it's either says on the green card, it says easy, I get it, I can do it by myself. The yellow is okay, I might need a little bit of help. Or the red is I still need a lot of help. So it prompts the kids to think about the lesson and are they learning. And it also is a quick um, way for the teachers to check in with the kids to see how they're doing. All right, that's it. I hope you, we hope that you learned a few things and something that you can use in your classroom. Feel free to reach out to either one of us. We're happy to share and enjoy all the resources in the slides. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.